Hello and welcome. I'm Ben. I'm a finance professor. And you're probably wondering, hey Ben, why are you wearing red today? Well, I'm wearing red because today we're going to talk about Harvard. Harvard's color is crimson, but I don't have crimson. This is the closest I got. So Harvard is the best college in the world. U.S. News and World Report, the most cited ranking website in the world, they say Harvard's number one. Lots of other websites, they also say Harvard's number one. If you're walking down the street, if you ask the first stranger you see, what's the best college? That person's going to tell you Harvard. There's not much doubt that Harvard's the best college. I mean, maybe the people at Yale would say, mm, no, Harvard's not the best, but pretty much Harvard's the best. Today, we're going to talk about Harvard Management Company. That's who runs Harvard's endowment, which is worth $53 billion, billion with a B. That's more than $10 billion bigger than the second biggest endowment. So Harvard's endowment is the biggest in the world by a lot. Harvard Management Company is who runs the endowment. The CEO of Harvard Management Company makes almost $10 million. That's more than 75% of the CEOs in the US. The next five highest guys make about $5 million a year. So these are the smartest guys at the smartest school running the biggest endowment in the world. Certainly, the smartest guys in the world making $10 million a year working at the smartest college in the world can do better than I could do if I went out and bought an index fund. No way I could do it nearly as, it couldn't, it couldn't be the case that I could do as well buying an index fund. But today we're going to look at the data. I'll put links to everything I'm mentioning here in the description below. You can verify everything yourself. So let's compare the returns of Harvard to an S&P 500 index fund. One caveat, Harvard's endowment is on the same year time frame as the school year. So Harvard's endowment returns are from July to June. So we're gonna look at the S&P 500 returns over the same period. We couldn't look at the S&P from January to December and compare that to Harvard, which goes from July to June. So the most recent year we have for Harvard ends in the summer of 2021. So the one year return for Harvard for the most recent year we have is 34%. That's pretty good. If someone told me you're gonna make 34% next year, I would be psyched. But the S&P 500 earned 41% over that same year. So the S&P earned more? That, no, that, uh, mm, maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it was, just, maybe it was just an outlier. Maybe it was just a fluke. Harvard's the smartest guys, the smartest college, the biggest endowment. The huge $10 million paycheck. It, just had, it, it, probably, it probably was just a fluke. Let's look at five years. Let's look at the average over the last five years. If we look at the average over the last five years, Harvard earned 13% per year. That's pretty good. If someone told me, hey, you're gonna earn 13% over the next five years, I'd take it. That's awesome. But the S&P earned 18% over that same time period. That's not 50% more, but it's about 50% more. Hmm, that's, that's weird. That, that's weird, that's weird. What if we go back to 10 years? What if we look at 10 year return? Over the last 10 years, Harvard earned 9% per year. That's way better than what people cite 7% as the average. 9% is pretty good. But the S&P earned 15% over the last 10 years. That's almost 50% better. How can that be? How, what, how, no, it doesn't. Wait, what if we go back to just before the financial crisis? Maybe Harvard does better during down markets. Maybe they outperformed during the down market. Let's go back to 2007 and see what the returns would be. If we go back to 2007, Harvard's averaged 7% per year, even through the two downturns, which are 2008, 2009, and then 2020, Harvard averaged 7% per year. So there are two crashes in there and they still have the long run average of 7%. That's pretty good. No way SP can do better than that, except the S&P averaged just over 10% over that same time period. So if we go back to before the crisis, the S&P averaged almost 50% more than Harvard. And you can just go buy an index fund in the S&P and earn the same returns as the S&P through pretty much no work. Anyone can do that. I mean, you just go to Vanguard, you say S&P 500 index fund, push buy, and you're done. Harvard guys are doing all kinds of stuff. They're paying guys $10 million a year, $5 million a year to try and outperform, and they're not losing by a little bit. They're losing by a lot. 50% is a lot. 7% compared to 10%. That's a big difference, especially since 2007. That's a lot of years. That's a big difference. And they're trying really hard and they're losing by a lot. I'm not pushing index funds on anyone, but I'm saying if you buy an SP 500 index fund since before the crisis, you do significantly better, almost 50% better than Harvard. The smartest guys in the world at the smartest school in the world paying their CEO $10 million a year. That's a bit crazy to me. That's a bit crazy to me but it's true. So that's today's video. I just wanted to compare Harvard to an S&P 500 generic index fund, a very, the most generic S&P 500 index fund. Harvard 
versus S&P 500 index fund, you and I can outperform Harvard by a lot with no effort. All right. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll see you guys in the next one.